Hey, we're the Aha Guys on location at Anime USA in Washington, D.C. And today we're joined by Troy Baker. How are Greetings. you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, man. Glad to be back in our nation's capital. I'm good, good. Uh, what is it like working in the VA industry today? I think it's a really exciting time for, for the industry as a whole, and especially to be an actor, um, because we're starting to see performances really take more center stage. And it's not about actors, but it, we're just finally able to tell the kind of stories that I think a lot of people have been wanting to do and have the technology behind it to support it. So it's it's, it's a really kind of exciting time for, for actors because we're, we're almost kind of on the ground floor and a part of the creative process of creating how we're going to start capturing um, performances in video games. And you see games like Last of Us and... and uh, and Bioshock, and it's really resonating with people, storytelling. Um, so to be able to be a part of that is, is pretty pretty fun, man. It's pretty cool. What is the favorite video game that you worked on, if you can pick one? A lot of people say it's like picking their favorite baby. Or, yeah, or breath. I always say, you know, if you asked a drowning man what his favorite breath was, he would say the one I took right before I got in the water, <laughs> you know. Um, each, and the reason why it's so hard to pick a favorite is because it's, each game, each project that you're on teaches you something different. So it could be a, a horrible game, or it could be a horrible character that you did, or you could do a terrible performance, but something that you learned along the way can make something your favorite, or, or at least add it to your favorites list, you know? Um, definitely, you know, Bioshock, being able to be a part of such a huge franchise, knowing that we were making an epic game that, that was going to uh, really... Um, do a number, you know, mentally on, on fans and, and being a part of, of something that I was such a huge fan of Bioshock 1. Um, that was a huge honor. Um, and then The Last of Us, you know, being able to create something with Naughty Dog, being such an un, a huge Uncharted and Jack and Dexter fan and, and being a part of that new IP that they're creating. That was that was definitely something that um, it was a banner day for me. And, and, and also being a part of... Uh, you know, Arkham Origins, to, to step in the shoes that have been filled with, you know, everyone from Jack Nicholson, Cesar Romero, Heath Ledger, Mark Hamill, being able to be a part of that, that's, um, those, those have got to be definitely my, my top three that just, just come to my mind, but again, every project you're on is, is kind of, uh, has a special place in your heart. Yep. You touched on a little bit, what was it like working on Bioshock Infinite? It was, it was great, it was, it Everyone was like, you know, was it hard? Was it difficult? Was it just moments? But we knew that we were making something good. Um, and Ken is, he's a mad scientist. He knows exactly what he wants. Um, and he's, hes a, you know, he's so well-versed in, in being a good storyteller that what's so, what I wish that everybody could see was the original ideas that you just eventually have to start chipping away because there's no way you can make that game. It either, you know, it would be called infinite for a definite reason because it would never come out. It would be infinitely per just delayed and postponed. Um, the scope of the game was, was even bigger than what it ended up being on the disc, and it's a huge game. Um, and it was an interesting process to, to work off of Courtney in that way. Um, you don't get a chance, when it's simply VO and there's not like performance capture involved, you don't get a chance to really work off of your actors as often. So I, I was glad that that was part of the process. What was it like working on Trinity Blood? Oh, man. I, I owe so much to Mike McFarlane. Um, that was the first lead role you know, for an animated series that anybody cast me in. And it was such, just such a beautiful story and the, care, and the beautiful world. You know, you've got such a great gothic setting with that show. And um, it, was, it, was a, it was an interesting character to play because obviously you've got, you know, um, this... this very naive, and, or not naive, but very, very humble, uh, unassuming, demure kind of character. And then you obviously have this dark, dark backstory and the juxtaposition that that played within the character. So that was fun to explore. And, and I, I'm so sad that there was only one season of it. Um, but I've been really encouraged to see what people have done in its absence and in its wake have created all these stories and where they wish they would have gone and, and what this means, because you've got all these beautiful little arcs that you could just really extrapolate on. Um, so yeah, that was that was definitely a, a, a huge thing for me. And I, I, again, that, that character and that story really holds a special place in my heart. What was it like working on the Saints Row series? It's nonstop fun. Nonstop fun. Um, I was a fan of, the, of, of Saints Row before um, I, I came on board in Saints Row 3, 
And I think Saints Row the Third is when the game really found its own legs and it really discovered, okay, this is the kind of game that we're going to be. We're no longer going to be the cut-rate uh, Grand Theft Auto, which is what everyone thought it was, and it really became its own franchise. It really became its own title. Um, and the process that we had was we would all, you know, I was, you know, the male default one, you know, and there's there's also um, Ken, there was the uh, uh, male default black guy, there's uh, Laura Bailey, who was the male default female, so you had all these different options depending upon who you wanted to play. And that was the whole thing about the game is customization, making it your own. Uh, but they had to have a guide track to for everyone to work off of. And on Saints Row the Third, I was that guide track, so I recorded with everybody else and then everybody else would come in and they would have to match my timing. And I, I discovered something about myself that you know you always want to have like your own unique thing. And mine apparently is just to have the weirdest freaking timing for delivery of lines than anybody else. Um, and the, the line could literally be just as simple as get in the car. And mine would be, you know, just get, 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 in, the, get, get, in, the, get in the car. Get in, get in the car. And Laura Bailey and Robin Eck and Downs and Ken and everybody else would have to match that. And I got a lot of I got a lot of hate emails and, and angry text messages going, why can't you just say the line? Um, but Laura Bailey got her revenge on, on Saints Row 4 because she was the person who did the guy track. And so I got, you know, my comeuppance and, and she definitely dealt me a few lines. I'm like, this is hard. So if anybody really likes the performances, it was all based off of what Laura Bailey did because she, I have to say, she is the real POTUS in that, in that game. It's fantastic. Um, and it's a fun game to play. Yeah. We just, I just finished it. I'm about 88% of the way completed, so I've got to get some gold medallions from, for some of the races or gold medals, but, uh, I know 100% completion on a sandbox game is a pretty daunting task. Yeah, it is. It is. You could be any of the characters you played in real life. Uh, who would it be and you can mix and match? Oh, wow. Interesting. Um... You, you automatically gravitate towards, you know, a character that really resonates well with you. You know, like, there's no way that I would want to be Joel. No way I would want to be Joel. Because what that guy's been through, the world that he is in, um, there's no way I would want to be him. And I think it says something about the characters that we're creating. Because you want them to be empathetic, but at the same time, you want them to be an avatar that you can slip into. But at the same time, it's like, dude, I don't want to be... I want to be that guy because if you really had to be in those shoes, would you want to be fighting that dragon? Would you want to be um, being chased down by clickers? Would you want to be, um, you know, running from handymen and then everything else? It's like I love. I think it's the same reason why we why, why we wear roller coasters, why we watch horror movies, is because we can do these dangerous things from a safe distance. Like, who would I want to be? God, dude, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I would that. Who would I have the most fun with is, like, if I was, the, like, the President of the United States, like I was in Saints Row 4. That would be amazing. Because I would have superpowers. I could get away with anything. Um, that, would, that would be fun. That would be the only fun character that I've done to actually be a part of. But then again, you're being chased by aliens. I don't know, man. <sighs> it's a hard one. <laughs> it is. Good question. Is there anything coming out you can talk about right now or anything that might have recently come out you want to plug? Absolutely. Um, Arkham Origins drops October 25th. Um, please buy it. Um, I think it's going to do really, really, really well. We've got amazing writers, Jeff Johns, who Batman fans will, and, and DC fans will uh, readily recognize his work. And it's very excited to have him uh, as, as a writing partner on, on the game. Um, in addition to everyone else that's at Warner Brothers Montreal, um, uh, from Eric, our creative director, down to... Um, our producers and everything, they've just done a really good job of, of paying homage to the, to the canon that is Batman and not being, respecting it enough to, being, uh, to know when we can stretch, when we can push and when we can pull and creating a very unique story. Um, and obviously this is something that points to the Arkham universe. Um, so if you've been a fan of Arkham Asylum or Arkham City, then this is going to fit right in that and, and give you a, a, a different story and a different way to play it. It's not just like playing those games over and over again. There's, from a mechanic standpoint, there's even new things. Um, and it's really cool. It's always a cool thing to see an origin story, I think. Um, so I'm definitely very excited about uh, Arkham Origins. Um, and then in February, we've got infamous uh, second son, Travis Willingham, uh, and I play brothers. Um, and then uh, Laura Bailey is also in it. She plays a character named Fetch, which they just revealed at, at Gamescom uh, a few months ago or last month. Um, that's coming out in February. I don't know if we have an actual street date yet, but it's going to be the first PS4 title that we're on. So it's I'm really excited about the new consoles. So. Those are the two things I can plug for sure. 
Okay. Uh, do you have a Facebook, Twitter, or any other social medias for people to get a hold of you? I'm a big Twitter guy. Yeah, Facebook is almost like that ex-girlfriend for me a little bit. It's like, yeah, we were we had a good time, but it's it's just you stay over there and you know we get custody of a cat or something. Uh, but yeah, at Troy Baker V is in Victor A is in Apple Troy Baker V A and uh, or you can just search for Troy Baker on the one with the blue check mark. Everyone else is a fraud. I'll take him down. You know who you are, Troy Baker. That's my name. Okay, we'll be in the Ohio guys on location. I'm Mike, he's Troy, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.